Martin Lewick. You can take out the bridle if you want. My husband would prefer if you did. Um, so I'll just, uh, very informal, just kind of share with you guys what I do. Um, it's still new. So in 2021, kind of coming out of that COVID year where we didn't get to do anything, I have always enjoyed growing flowers and I have some connections with some other people who do what I do. Uh, my cousin's wife actually is a flower farmer in Iowa and with some guidance from her, I said, hey, I'd like to give this a try. I have ample space and land on the farm. Uh, actually, we had a little plot of field that sat empty because we couldn't do anything else with it. Um, and so I commandeered that space. I said, that's mine. I'm going to plant some flowers and see what happens. So bought seeds, started seeds. Um, I'll show you in a few slides. I have a little greenhouse where I start all the seeds and started planting flowers and selling flowers directly to customers and tried to kind of organically grow what I was doing as far as the business goes. I have at that time, I had no major expectations other than I just wanted to be able to be outside playing with the flowers and doing the things that I enjoy doing and challenging myself to occupy absolutely every second of the day with activity. Um, backing up a little bit more about myself, married, my husband works off the farm, I work on the farm, and then we have four kids together, 16, almost 14, 11, and 7. Four kids are hard to keep track of their ages. Um, and the oldest one, a little side note, Bragg, he's a wrestler. We get to go to Cadott tonight for team sectionals. So Stratford, go Stratford. <laughs> so pretty excited about that. Um, so anyway, Harmony Blooms was born in 2021. And then my full-time gig, which I'm supposed to be doing all the time, uh, I work on our dairy farm. We milk 500 cows. My main responsibilities are pretty much everything. I manage the labor force, um, herd manager, so I deal with all animal-related activities. And recently, I've been tasked with machinery, shop maintenance, manure hauling, field work, uh, so everything. Um, so it keeps me pr pretty busy, but we live on the farm. We have downtime in the summer where I can go putz around in the garden and do my thing. My parents, Ralph and Sharon, still own the dairy, and then I have some interest in the farm as well. So I kind of touched on it a little bit, how I got started. Um, you know, I, flowers speak for themselves. I grow a large variety of things in the summer. These over here, pretty excited about. Those are called ranunculus going to be doing a lot of those. The goals for my business to continue to grow the customer base, get people interested in the product that I have. Um, I was interested in the last speaker in regards to developing the customer base. It's probably the most challenging part about starting a business and doing things. Uh, we all, the business that we start on our own we're doing it because we know what we're doing or we have a passion for that. Like that's the easy part. The hard part is selling the product to somebody, connecting with the person that is going to be your customer and is gonna buy your product. So I'm still navigating that, still trying to figure that out. My husband wishes it would happen faster. Um, I'm content, you know, let's just let it kind of go how it goes and see what happens. So this last year I did the farmer's market in Stratford small farmer's market, it was easy, it was one day a week, it was just a couple hours, and it was at the coffee shop. So get coffee, sell a few flowers, and kids played in the park, it was pretty easy. Uh, not a real traumatic experience. I'm not gonna do the Saturday morning things because like she said before, that's a lot of commitment, and I don't know if I have the emotional energy to talk to people all morning long about the same thing. So not doing that, I do, some direct sales off the farm, people who know me, um, a lot of parents of kids that my, my kids are friends with, I've connected with, and we sell to them. Um, just touching on a few of the things that I do grow. Ignore the weeds. Weeds are, are a real challenge. Um, mass quantities of sunflowers, but 
Spring crops that we grow are some fancy tulips, peonies, um, ranunculus, and daffodils. Summer crops, snapdragons, uh, false indigo, sunflowers, zinnias, cosmos, lysianthus, dahlias, straw flowers, lupine, yarrow, stock, rubecchia, and other various foliage plants, so like um, ferny type things that you fill in with. Fall crops are dahlias again, sunflowers, more rubecchia, different um, like decorative corns, and then your various fall decor plants, pumpkins, corn, and that sort of thing, straw, and that sort of silly stuff. I think um, this year, because my time is a little bit more limited, because my responsibilities in my full-time job have grown, I'm probably going to narrow my list down of things that I'm growing and really specialize in a few different um, crops and not try to grow such a large variety. Dahlias, every, I, I love dahlias. Um, I grow and source a lot of interesting plants from across the country. So this time of year, they, all the different dahlia growers are selling all of their tubers. You go online, you order a bunch of tubers, and then come March, April, probably April, they'll ship them to you, and then you can pop them in the ground and have yourself some more plants. Um, so probably going to focus uh, quite a bit on those this year and just having a, a larger variety of the, the dahlias to offer. The products that I do sell at this moment, um, spring and summer flower subscriptions. So basically what it is, is if you're familiar with the CSAs that um, vegetable farmers do, where you buy a share, this is a similar idea. You can do it for the spring, or you can do it for the summer, or you can do it for both. But for a price, you can you will receive biweekly flowers through the particular growing season um, that are picked up at the farm, or or we can arrange delivery depending on location. Um, obviously, you can order a single spring or summer bouquet. You know, if you have somebody's birthday coming up or a special occasion, you wanna buy, buy somebody a bouquet of flowers or some special reason, reach out and you can order one bouquet, super simple. Um, I have offered bulk flowers, which is kinda of neat. So you're hosting a graduation party, a birthday party, retirement party, uh, and you just want some decoration for your table, but you don't wanna to have to buy pre-made bouquets because that gets expensive. I can sell you a bucket of flowers and you can make your own little arrangements on your table. I did that for a wedding recently and I have a picture on here I'll show you. It turned out beautiful. The mom was a real creative lady. She bought four buckets of flowers and they did the arrangements and super simple and everybody thought it was, was really nice. Um, Dahlia bouquets. Working on developing the dahlia tuber sales. So uh, if you're familiar with the dahlia flowers, it starts from a clump of tubers or a single tuber. And all of the life that comes out of the plant comes from this one little tuber. And as they grow through the season, they multiply. Some varieties are more prolific than others. Um, but then come winter, you can divide those, that clump and down into individual little clumps you don't need them all. I don't need to grow 500 of one variety. So I would like to develop a system to be able to sell the extras in the springtime to other growers. Haven't crossed that threshold yet. Um, and then the other thing that I would like to um, begin doing is an evening in the garden. It's basically pick your own bouquet, come hang out in the garden. We can have snacks, hors d'oeuvres, maybe drinks. Um, do that a couple times during the summer, just open up the, the farm for people to kind of come out and hang out in the pretty flower field. So some more flowers. Uh, all these, I, I grew all of these. Um, the one in the middle is from the wedding that was actually in a barn, like in the haymow of, of their barn. So it turned out really nice, but different varieties of the dahlias that I was mentioning. My daughter, Adeline, that's my youngest. She's the one that helps me the most. Um, 
I don't know if she's necessarily helping or if she's just in her own little imaginary world while I'm working, but she's usually hanging out with me. Um, so she tends to be my model, but just some different varieties of flowers and bouquets that I've made through the seasons. I also have, which made this decision easy is a number of years ago, I convinced my husband that I needed a greenhouse. And I said, it'll be great, we'll just get old windows from people selling, like replacing the windows in their house, and we'll just put them in the building and it'll be easy. It wasn't easy, it took almost a year for him in his spare time to construct it, uh, but he did it. He did it and that was 2011, 2012, somewhere in there. So this time of the year, I am ordering seeds, I'm planting seeds, I'm fingers crossed hoping that they will germinate and they'll grow and that everything goes as planned. These pictures were probably taken, well, I have actual annual flowers in there that I bought from the greenhouse, so probably in April. All of these things get, end up getting planted out into the field. So my winter activities are, we have it's heated with a wood stove, so we make wood and then light fires all the time. I hate lighting fires. <laughs> um, and then just how to contact us. We're on all of the social media platforms, well, a couple of them, Instagram, Facebook, have a website, ordering flowers through the website. Uh, the capability is there. In all honesty, nobody has done it yet, so I'm not exactly sure how it's going to work. So if you wanna order flowers come spring, do it that way and let me know, we'll see. And then my email is on there. Interestingly, when you grow tulips for cut flower purpose, you can lay them in the ground. There's 2,000 tulips in there. So if you want tulips in a couple months, I'm your girl. Um, you just put them, bunch them in there. They don't need to be spaced out. You just put them in there. And then actually when it comes time to harvest, you pull the whole plant out, bulb and all, the whole thing. And professional growers, people in Holland, like people who really know what they're doing, they'll pull them out at a certain stage of growth and then you can actually wrap them up, put them in a cooler and with the bulbs on and they'll kind of hold that way for a while. So it buys you some time to be able to sell your product. I don't have a cooler. Um, that's another thing my husband is reluctant to do for me, but at some point, at some point. Um, so right now we plant them like that and just crates and crates of tulips. This, the second one is from this past spring, so that's the different uh, varieties that have bloomed. Um, some verbena is the purple spindly thing in the middle, rows of snapdragons. I love snapdragons. I think they're great. The bottom left is just after every, like all the seedlings were transplanted in the spring. So pretty bare and then it turns into this by midsummer have interesting scenery at the end of the, the, the um, farm because our gigantic manure pit is right next door. So try to disguise that a little bit, but anybody have any questions on anything? Throw them away. So a tulip, when it grows, if you were to put tulips just out in your landscaping, the bulb stays there and then you, it flowers, the foliage dies back, like the natural process of it dying back then regenerates the bulb for next season. By taking the full, even if you were to cut the flower off and leave the bulb in the ground, there's no foliage left to regenerate the bulb for the next season. So they just go in the compost pile. I mean, we're 50 feet off the end of our freestyle barn. Yeah. Freestyle barn is right there. Um, I mean, it might be one acre of space, but it's not all full. It's, I've never actually measured it. Reason is I don't, a lot of um, like the flower farming forums that I'm a part of and I, I read everybody's information to try and learn and they're all limited on space. You know, they have X number of space, so they measure it out. I can do what I want. I have all the space and I can make more if I want. So it's more just how much work do I want? So I would say it's probably a one acre field, but it's maybe half of it is planted and stuff. And then I'm, um, yeah, 
I am working through trying to develop a good system for me because I don't have water out there, so I have to run a hose. Um, so either overhead sprinklers or I have like little drip lines that I lay down. None of it's convenient. It's best if it rains once a week. Well, yeah, I, it kind of depends on how you sell your product. So if you're selling wholesale, it's per stem. Um, I haven't dabbled in wholesale because I don't have enough volume to justify doing it. So it's per bunch of flowers. You know, I've priced a bouquet. And then every time I make a bouquet, I make it about the same size with the same kind of flowers, and it's that price. Developing customer base is probably the biggest challenge. Pretty remote. I've actually had people say, well, I don't want to drive to Marshfield Friends. I don't want to drive to Stratford. I'm like, it's really not that far. I drive, to, <laughs> I drive to Marshfield almost every day. And then when I do convince somebody to come out, they're like, oh, that's not that far away. I'm like I told you. Um, so. I think people feel like we're a little removed, but we're really not. We're a mile off a major highway. So yeah, developing customers is, is the biggest challenge. Facebook is free, so we use it. Is it, in my case, the most um, successful? I don't know. It's developing, not developing, that's not the right word, um, identifying what your customer base is. So is your customer base using Facebook? Then use it. If your customer base is using Instagram, um, that's where you go to find them. I find that it's hard to connect with new people using social media. Um, some other people in, in my area in the flower industry are big promoters of doing the email, um, subscriber. I personally think it's annoying because you get 5,000 emails every day, you can't possibly, you're not gonna read every business's subscriber email they send you, so it doesn't get me in as a customer. Um, so I'm not really sure what the best avenue is. I think word of mouth, friends, friends sharing your story, saying, hey, you should go get flowers or, um, because it's a cool product and it's a cool story. So gr starting the business, Early on, I think the biggest thing is just word of mouth through friends, family. Yeah, it was a guess. It was, you know, I was shooting from the hip. I have too much. I can grow way more than I can sell. I mean, you just can. I, even, even somebody who's doing it as their full-time business is still going to have more than they can sell at some points. Uh, great thing, it makes good compost. So, <laughs> so fertilizer for next year. So the first year I did it... Um, I was advised on, you know, kind of the different flowers to look into growing. The easy things to start from seed. And you can do all the math, calculations, spacing, how much you should plant in your in your rows to figure out exactly a good a good business person would have done that. I said I can do what I want to do because I I have the luxury of doing it that way. Um, and I just planted a bunch and I kind of felt out how it went and how it grew and what came from what I planted. Now I'm a little bit more diligent about making the decision. You know, buying seeds and looking at seed catalogs can get a little addicting and you sometimes have to remind yourself that it is a business and you need to make a good business decision. The hardest part is when you so a lot of the things I grow, tulips is one prime example, you harvest it and it's all or none. Like you take it all now because it's all ready now. You can put it in a cooler and you can hold it for a while, but it needs, a, it needs an outlet. You need to sell it. Uh, and when you have to throw it away because it's past its prime, yeah, that, that stinks. Like it would be, you need to have a good plan going into it, where it's going to go and who's going to buy it. Yeah, you don't want to throw stuff away. But it happens. Some things, yeah. Some things um, works well. Also, you have to let them in the garden, you know, past their prime a little bit. So you have to make a conscious decision, like this this particular flower, I'm going to save as for drying purposes and not as fresh purposes. Because uh, if you put them in the cooler, like if you harvest it and you put them in the cooler, they and you don't use it, it's because they went bad, and so you can't really dry them at that point. So you 
kind of have to make that decision at harvest time. Like, what are you going to do with it? I'm not a big dried flower person. Like, it's just, they're kind of messy to me, so I haven't really done much with it. But I do know a lot of people that um, their winter sales is dried flowers and making wreaths and that sort of thing, so. Uh, my, my professionals were peers um, within the industry of growing flowers. I read what I could read. There's a bazillion different resources to grow flowers on a commercial basis. There's um, Facebook pages, Instagram pages, websites, um, seed suppliers. So I used a lot of those resources to kind of learn how to do it. As far as, like I didn't, I didn't um, seek any financial advisors or anything like that. Um, so most of my resources were peers. I was involved, like you said earlier, my parents um, decided one year, and I didn't talk about this at all because I wasn't super involved in it, but one year they decided, um, 2000, Six, 2007 is when this all kind of happened. Instead of growing the herd, more cows, more cows, because that was the trend. Uh, we were already at 500 cows. We, none of us had a desire for more. We um, wanted to add value and to our products. So how do we add value to that? We thought, let's start making cheese. And again, this was my parents' project, and I just kind of taste tested and offered feedback and kind of sat back and watched things unfold. But that was definitely, that was another business that was, there was clear intentions, there was, you know, all of the analysis that, that she had talked about earlier was involved in that because there was a lot of uh, financial investment. I decided one day I'm going to grow flowers and see how it, see how it goes. Um, and kind of enjoy what I'm doing because I can, because I'm not financially committed to having to make a profit. And I think maybe that makes it more fun makes it more stressful for my husband to watch, but I, I mean, it makes it more fun because you don't have, yeah, right or wrong. Um, I don't know if that's the answers you wanted me to share with these people today, but in all honesty, like it's, it's an enjoyable process for myself because if it's profitable, great. If it's not, okay, I'll do it again next year. I mean, what, what's the, the risk mitigation that you would take, it would, it would be planning and only growing what you could sell and making sure you have the customer base to sell it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I work on it, but am I a professional at it? Absolutely not. It's a work in progress. Just making sure you have a market for your product, I think is the biggest. Back to, circling back to the cheese factory thing, uh, or owning the, the cheese factory, making cheese. As dairy farmers, we produce a product, milk. Um, and we put it in the tank, and the milk truck driver picks it up, and it goes to the plant, and we get a check. And dairy farmers are not marketers. They don't know how to sell product. So the people that do sell our product, thank you, because it's really difficult. So to be in a position where we need to develop a market for a product, even, you know, the side things, direct marketing meat, whatever it is, like that's really outside of our area of expertise. So it's interesting to have to navigate that a little bit. <laughs>